morning, everybody. <gasps> Today is Terrific Tuesday, and Terrific Tuesday is going to be about the things that make us think of spring. Hachoo! 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 Yeah, allergies. And also, things that make us think of spring. Great music, because we all get out those classic cars, and then we look for those songs that make us think of them, and then poke salad. If you like poke salad, then you get out and you pick you some poke salad. Right now is about the time to start doing it and looking for it. And then if you love, if you love honey, then you might think of being a beekeeper. And a lot of folks have turned into um, something that is, it's not always profitable because it costs a lot to get started with bees, but it's a lot of fun and it is helping the environment. And I got to tell y'all a story of what happened at our office yesterday. It was hysterical. Miss Evelyn is a, what would I call her? A naturalist, an environmentally uh, protective person. Now, if there was a bee in the office, see this hairdo? That bee was headed for this hairdo. And this bee's just flying around, flying around, flying around. Well, I'm thinking she's going to kill the bee. And so I hand her a fly swatter. She said, uh-uh, she's trying to capture the bee and take it outside to be with the other bees. And I'm going, and I looked at her after about her trying for about 10 minutes, and I said, if you weren't here, that bee would be meeting Jesus right now because I would have swatted it with a fly swatter and he'd be dead. She worked until she captured the bee and she took the bee outside to join its friends. Now that's a nature lover. Spring is the best time in the world to love nature. If you love wild azaleas, you can ride out all through these mountains and you can find some wild, az wild azaleas. If you love the lady slippers, they are coming up now and they are blooming and they're so rare and so beautiful. There's so many things to see in the spring, but one of the great things about riding around and looking for things in the spring is listening to music. And we know we love gospel music, we love old rock and roll, we love Mr. Ella J's, whatever he does. He does that up-tempo stuff that just makes you think about those yesteryears. That's what spring is about. And today we're gonna to share a lot of stuff that reminds me of spring. Also one of the things that reminds me of spring, it is fishing season again. Carter's Lake will be full of guys and Pickens County has actually a fishing team that did very, very well last year. And we've got a team, the Fountain Brothers, who did very, very well last year. And y'all know that they were nominated and they were inducted into the Catfish Hall of Fame. That is a pretty big deal. So we're gonna share that again with y'all today and show you get your kids out Buy them a fishing rod. Don't buy a big expensive one. Buy them something to teach them how to fish because not all kids are going to like to be the patience it takes to fish. But get out on the many lakes in the areas that we serve and take your children fishing. Just sit on a, you can sit on a riverbank with them. You can go down to the Etowah down in Ball Ground. So many creeks you could go to. There's so many places that you can just sit, reflect, relax. And I'm going to give you a bit of advice put your cell phone in the car and lock it up while you're out there with your child. Devote the time to your child, your environment, and your sanity, and enjoy fishing. We're gonna take you now to some photos and some fishing of um, something that I'm really, really proud of. I hope soon to have Lonnie and Donnie here in the studio with us. They, if they're not on a roof, they're on a, a creek or a river fishing. But I hope you're gonna get to uh, meet these two very, very, very humble, very, very good guys. And um, they give all the glory to God. And every time they succeed, they just look up and say, thank you, Lord. And that's what it's about. That's what every single day should be about. We should be thanking him for this beautiful day today. So here we go to the Fountain Brothers. The American Catfishing Association is proud to present to you the legacy and accomplishments of two legends in the world of catfishing, Mr. Lonnie Fountain and Mr. Donnie Fountain. Today, the American Catfishing Association would like to take you on a journey, a journey that spans over 45 years, fueled by passion, 
resilience, and the pure joy of fishing. It's a story that begins in the most unexpected of places, the wrestling ring. Imagine being eight years old, itching to cast your first line into the water, but lacking the means to do so. That was the humble beginning of the Fountain Brothers. Lonnie and Donnie found themselves in a wrestling ring not to wrestle, but to seize an opportunity. As the wrestlers took their break, they wrestled with fate, and the spectators, moved by their determination, contributed enough change for them to buy their very first fishing poles, a Zebco 202. Those fishing rods weren't just tools for leisure. They were instruments of survival. The brothers fished for food, scraping by with what they could catch. But adversity only strengthened the resolve of these two accomplished anglers. One day, emboldened by their passion, the brothers slipped into a nearby private pond, oblivious to the consequences. The property owner, none too happy with their presence, armed and furious, chased the brothers away, with shots echoing through the trees. In their haste, the brothers abandoned their rods, leaving behind their dreams. Fast forward 45 years, and fate intervened once more. Over the years, Lonnie and Donnie had established a vibrant roofing business. One day, the Fountain brothers were contacted by none other than the son of the once-upset pond owner. He hired the Fountain brothers to roof his house. Little did Lonnie and Donnie know, the property owner's son held more than tools and equipment in his barn. The man approached Lonnie and Donnie holding their long-lost fishing poles. The son recounted his father's actions and asked for redemption and forgiveness, returning the once-cherished fishing rods the brothers had long ago left behind. The cherished rods, weathered by time, hold more than memories. They hold the brothers' purpose. It's why they have dedicated themselves to giving back. Over the years, knowing how meaningful fishing can be to children and adults alike, the Fountain Brothers have handed out over 550 fishing rods to kids, igniting in them the same passion that ignited Lonnie and Donnie. Their journey didn't end with just spending time on the water fishing. It evolved into something greater. The Fountain Brothers found themselves drawn to the sport and challenges of tournament fishing, mesmerized by the skill and determination of the competing and accomplished tournament anglers. Through observation and perseverance, Lonnie and Donnie learned to compete, soaking in every word, every tip, every technique the catfish community was willing to share. The determination to become champions has never been more evident. Time and time again, as Lonnie and Donnie Fountain have won countless tournament events that have featured some of the best tournament anglers in the nation. Throughout their journey and accomplishments, the Fountain Brothers have remained humble and generous with both their time and knowledge. Their willingness to mentor others, new to fishing or a seasoned angler, has remained a constant, making Lonnie and Donnie Fountain two of the most respected ambassadors to the sport of catfishing. Accomplishments and the journey aside, their greatest pleasure lies in guiding and mentoring the next generation. When Lonnie and Donnie were one day introduced to a kids' event by fellow anglers who believed in them, they witnessed miracles unfold. From a speech-impaired teenager catching 26 channel cats, to a wheelchair-bound boy defying odds catching a trophy flathead, having a part in their triumphs echoed louder than any tournament victory. For over 18 years now, Lonnie and Donnie Fountain have stood witness to the purest form of joy etched on the faces of children as they reel in their first catch. It's a reminder that our true victories aren't measured by trophies, but by the smiles we inspire. So, as the Fountain Brothers continue their journey, they remind us all to remember the essence of our passion. It's not just in the pursuit of our own accomplishments that matters as much as the connections we forge and the lives we touch. In the end, it's not about the catch, but the hearts we reel in along the way. Thank you, Lonnie Fountain. Thank you, Donnie Fountain, for being the great ambassadors to the sport of catfishing you are. With great honor, we welcome you both to the ACA Hall of Fame.
Wow. You know, um, this weekend they won another tournament. They won big fish. They, they did it all. They nailed it. And honestly, they always give the praise and glory to God. And uh, that is so amazing. Yesterday, you got to see once again our friend Mike, who wrote this book, God Keeps Showing Up. And um, lately, I've talked to so many people who said, well, you know, why did my child die? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why did the man that I loved do what he did? Why did this happen? Why, why, does, why do we do this? And I was reading something from a friend, and, and she said, it happened to make us stronger. It happened to make us better. I went to the cemetery the other day, and I was sitting there, and I was just looking at all the people that are gone, and I thought, oh, my gosh, would I bring them back if I could? No. Would you expect them to leave heaven and come back here? No. Do you miss them? Absolutely. And um, I look at my mother's life, and I just think about, you know, she was younger than I was when she passed away than I am now. When she passed away, my dad was younger than I was, I am. And I think about that. How much more time do I have? How much more time do you have? How much more time do any of us have? Well, there's somebody in the Bible who had some time, and then he got some extra time. And I want to read this. This is one of Mike's um, short excerpts, and this is called Reckon. And the reason I chose this is because it reminds me of my grandmother because she always said, well, I reckon I will. Well, I reckon if you want to, I reckon we can. I heard reckon probably a million times in my life as I talked to my granny. But listen to this. I believe Paul was from the South because of some of the words that he used. One in particular comes to mind when he said, I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which we will be revealed to us, Romans 8.18. I believe Paul was telling us that the temporary things in this life help us appreciate the eternal things of the next. He's telling us not to give up when we go through the storms and the hard times in our life. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, Therefore we do not lose heart. Through outward, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Words of truth from a man who made a visit to heaven. He shared his heavenly experience in 2 Corinthians 12. He was caught up in, into paradise. Paul had the unique privilege to go to heaven and return to tell of it. He knew what he was talking about. We can rest in the Lord knowing one day all things will be made right. We have Paul and God's word on it. When you think about that, as you visit the cemetery, the spring is the time that we take fresh flowers and we go and visit and we remember, would you bring them back? Absolutely not. Did Paul get to come back? Yeah, he was pretty lucky, wasn't he? But we think about it, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> spring allergies. And we think about all those people that mattered to us. I have two dear friends down in Ball Ground who are very unique ladies. They are overachievers. They are amazingly beautiful and they are um they're very they're how, how do i say they're fun but they're very planned too <coughs> they, oh gosh allergies they enjoy life but they also very strategic in everything they do well once a year these ladies open the door to 70 years of rock collecting that their father did and this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 in ball ground, right across from our office, you know, like here's the burger bus, here's our office, here's the rock, rock man, as everybody called him. This, this Saturday, 10 to 2, write it down and be there. So many people look in the windows, they come to our office and say, when can we go in there and get those rocks? Once a year you get to do it. So this is the weekend. Get out, bring your money, and I know a lot of y'all have been looking in the windows and thinking, I'd like to have that one, I'd like to have that one. I'm not sure how much of the merchandise they will bring out, but there will be a lot of rocks out there, truly from a 70-year collection. 
these ladies now visit their dad at the cemetery. You know, we have uh, so many family members that are gone on, but they left us a legacy, a legacy of life, a legacy of sometimes stuff, a legacy of wisdom, and uh, sometimes we look at their failures and we say we can do better. And I think that's what life is about. No matter what we're facing today, we can do better tomorrow. So if you're having a bad day today, if you're facing something that you're thinking, how in the world am I going to get through that? I think you'll get through it. I think you'll make it. And I think that you just have to trust him to be there with you. And a lot of times I meet somebody who says, well, I made it through it and I don't know how. And I just scratch my head and say, well, I made it through it and I do know how. Because I know how that that's the way we make it through it. There are going to be days that we think, um, this is not going to happen. Can't make it work. No way can this. And then it happens and you're going, really? Yeah. Well, it happened. And recently that happened and I shared with you what we went through because of a reverse mortgage disaster. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And we are getting very close to finalizing this. And it has been a lesson learned. A lesson learned. And I tell everybody, spend time with your parents. Look at what they'd like to do at the end of their life. And, and while they're still completely with it, spend time honoring their wishes but also giving them a little bit of advice. And I think that's so important because we don't need to see them make mistakes that they wouldn't have done earlier, you know. And, and I think that's the important thing. Catch the things that you see happening and, and correct them and make it, make it work out for everybody. So I think that's important. We're going to share some stuff with you today. It is poke salad time. And we showed you a little bit of poke salad last week. And... Um, went out looking there wasn't any poke salad growing yet went out yesterday didn't find any poke salad again where's the poke salad well over at harrison park last year there was a ton of poke salad so i'm going to try that one again i don't know what's going on i don't know if it's been too cold i don't know if it's been too dry it sure hasn't been too dry because it's been raining plenty but we're going to show you a little bit more if you like poke salad it's a lot of fun to do but you work really hard to get very little because this big pile goes to this pile. But it's worth it. So here we go. We've struck gold, people. And I want that house. I wonder if they take a super sport in on trade. Washing the poke salad. Washing the poke salad in a mighty big sink. Did it take yeah. a big sink because you had a big bunch? It did. And this is the second one. It took an hour and a half to clean this sink up, too. <laughs> is this the second washing right here of this batch? That is, yeah. And this batch was washed three times? Three times, yeah. Three times. Three and, time uh, charm. And you got to do this, dude. Yeah, you let that water run off of there. You don't want this dirty water in your new clean or bath. No, you don't. Now, let me say, I've asked people to tell, how do you do what we're doing? And some folks, I want to show this, told me that I would have to peel those stems before I could fry it for okra type stuff. You don't have to peel them because they're tender. You don't. Well, if they're tender, they can be tough, right. but don't pick them tough. Don't pick them tough. You know. That's right. Okay, so this one is the second one for right there. This will be the second one. They're mighty pretty today. They don't look like they've been abused a bit. Have you been good to them? Yeah. Can you tell about what you found in there? Because I'd say you found some stuff. Find a few sticks, find yeah. pine needles, yeah. find bugs. Oh. Yeah. Is that why we three wash them? Yeah, and we may four wash them. I don't know. We're, I'm studying. Yeah, yeah. 
Because you're a little uh, OCDC, is that the word? A little bit or something. <laughs> a little bit DA or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is, we're celebrating a year of you wrecking my life and coming to my show mm -hmm. and taking over. Thanks you, didn't I? I did. Yeah, you did. I said, you want to come do a show? And the rest is history. Now you run the place. This is really cool, and I'm so glad. These are you healthy looking. <laughs> These are healthy looking, aren't they? Yeah. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, after we do this, then we're going to, you call that parboil? What do you do? What are we going to do? Doesn't matter, for? yeah. Yeah. Heat temperature is not even an issue. Just turn it over and let it rip. In that big old pot. And it'll just lay down. Yeah. And then we're going to see out of, would you say this is 25 pounds or more? Of, I don't know. It was heavy yesterday. I now, always try to guess, <clears throat> but it never hits right. Well, can we tell folks we're at 57 Heaven doing this? We are this? at 57 Heaven. <laughs> I can show people the shop rate prices up there, $55. we are at 57 <laughs> Heaven, but we're not mechanicking today. We're not. We we're not. are prepared. Well, Pre getting poke salad ready is uh, several about four stages, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're in stage two right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm seeing it now. Is this fresh well water coming on you? Yes, it is. That's yes, what you drink. Right That's there. what I drink every day. That has to be the best well water. You're not going to send me a bill for all that well water, are you? Well, we'll see how you do. All right. Well, I'll be good. I'll try to be good. If you show out. That you know. is the best water, I just have to say. Can we tell I tested it and it's it tested been... back 100% perfect? So I said, okay, it's it, time it to have drink to be. it. <laughs> that water's coming out of uh, 40 feet of rock. 20 feet down, right in the middle of 40 feet of rock. Well, now, I'm going to show this nastiness, and I don't want people to get upset, but this is the nastiness that comes off the green job. Of course, they were on the ground, so it's a little bit of dirt, a little bit of crud, but nothing bad, and that's, that's you know, that's your water. That's your water. Yep. And it's important that you keep them good and clean. Now, this set of water, which is the second set of water, is not nigh dirty. It's looking pretty this fresh. This is second washing right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'll yep. drain this up. Yep. And, and come then back. we'll do it again. Do we'll it do it again. again. Well, we're going to take about... I actually week. washed it four times over there. Four yeah, times four to times. get that pretty. We're going to take about a 10-minute break, and he's going to go up here and choke down his lunch. So hang tight, guys. We'll be back. Ready? <sighs> lift him up. And you let that water drain out of your washing. How cool. Yeah. You doggies. And then go in the clean sink. Yep. Not to be confused with where you wash transmissions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't wash transmissions here. <laughs> I, I wash it. my hands. It'd probably be cleaner <laughs> if I washed transmissions. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Lordy, lordy, lordy. This is a lot of poke salad. Yeah. I'd say if you went to the doctor and you was a telling and you had an ailment and your tummy didn't feel good, he'd say, well, you need a good spring clean, and this is a good way to get it. Yep. This is a good way to get it. About two or three messes of this, and you are spring cleaned for good. Awesome. I could feel that stick you saw. Yep. That was about it. Yep. And y'all, here you go. This is, as we look at the water, you can see that there is a little bit of color to it. But less than the other less one. Less than the last one, yes. A yep. whole bunch less than the last one, yeah. And you can feel when it starts getting clean, it'll be all squeaky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cool, so cool. Cool stuff. What you reckon our editor's going to say when he starts editing this? Because, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a city boy. You think he's going to think we've come, yeah. come plumb to losing our minds? That Tim, he may not know what poke salad is. I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, he's got that little newborn he baby. Does. We need to be teaching that baby about poke salad. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's looking like we're making some progress here. Yay. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, have you ever tasted this stuff not cooked? No, you said your friend did, and they didn't like it at all. It's not friendly if it ain't cooked. Yeah, okay. It's not friendly if it ain't cooked right. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I've been around people before and they say, I made some boat salad, and they go, you didn't. Surely you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can we tell a little bit about your brother Winston cooking the best you ever had? Yep. Tell me about that. I was coming in one evening right over there on that hill, come right through there with the school bus, end of the route. And my old brother was staying over there in a little trailer. And he had him one of them uh, Coleman little oven things. And I felt sorry for him. He, he come over and met me at the bus and he said, uh, he was talking to me and he said, uh, you may not want to eat it, he said, you probably think it's nasty. But I made some poke salad if you want some. And I said, I'll eat it. And he had made it on that little Coleman oven mm -hmm. down there in his little trailer thing. Yeah. And uh, that right there was the best poke salad I ever ate in my life. What about that? And uh, better than anybody. Your Mom mama's? included anybody. Oh, it beat all. He knew how to cook it. Wow. And uh, he loved poke salad too. Winston Sanford was his name. Yeah. He'd, uh, it was the best poke salad right then. I eat every bit of it. I said, you gonna be all right if I eat every bit of this? Yeah, I ate it, he said. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> I ate all of his poke salad that day. Never forget it, it was right there, just right around the corner here. Wow, sweet memories. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're doing. We're trying to share memories of our childhood and, and the women and, and, and the men who taught us about cooking. And there's a whole lot that we can go to about cooking when the guys took over the kitchens because there's some pretty great cooks out there and they're not all women. I don't claim to be a cook. I'm not a cook. <laughs> but I heard tell. But I can make you poke salad. Yes, you can. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Well, here you go. I'm going to show that water one time. There you are. It's getting better every time, y'all. Yep, and that's just is. the green discoloration from the from the leaves. So, there you go. And that might tell folks when the Indians were looking for dye to color things, to even color their pottery, they would go to the plants to create yeah, the will. colors. Yeah, whether mm -hmm. it be the Pope salad berries, which were the deep, deep purple, or the green, you know, that's what you use when you were doing pottery. You created your own color, and that's pretty awesome. Yep. Fun day. Now, right near all that poke salad was something very near and dear to my heart. And this shirt that I've got on today, at the end of the show, we're going to show you the back of this shirt because it was designed around a very special 66 Chevelle. We're going to share the photos of this car in production, in the works, getting ready to have a master makeover by the master of makeovers, who we won't name. But 66 Chevelles are always um, very hard to come by, but matching number Chevelles are really, really hard to come by. And so when I was thinking about I wanted a shirt that I could wear to car shows or to events that we do, whatever, and I just wanted it to have the uh, Sherry Show logo on it. Then I wanted something I love. I love 66 Chevelles. So when I designed it, I called one of my friends up in <coughs> South Carolina who is a great designer on racing stuff. And I said, okay, Lee, this is what I want. And I said, you know what port and polished means? He said, yes. And I said, do you know that most women think port and polished has something to do with a manicure? And I said, you and I know it has to do with a 375 horsepower engine. So let's put that on the shirt. And that's what we did. And uh, I love these shirts, wear them all the time. And it's just a fun shirt to remind me how much I love those 66 Chevelles. Can't wait till this one is finished. It's gonna be very exciting. It will be either white or silver, not sure yet. It's kind of still up in the air. We think the original color was white, but the color of choice might be silver. So we'll see, and we'll leave it to the master to decide because when he picks up his spray gun, he may think it'd look better silver. He may think it'd look better going back original. So we'll see. But if you're out, car shows, a lot of, a lot of fun to spend some time, some get out and walk those car shows, look, talk to folks. Remind you of all the cars you had, the cars your daddy had. 
those cars that are special. There are so many people who chase down the cars that they used to own. Oh, would I love to chase down my first white Chevelle with a black bench seat, the first one I ever owned, and oh my goodness, if I could find that car. If I could find that car, Teddy Duncan, go look for that car and find it for me. The last Chevelle that I drove daily was a silver one, and I sadly sold it to one of my cousins who totaled it within two weeks. Broke my heart, and I've learned something about 66 Chevelles. If you have one, you don't get rid of it under any conditions. You barn it, you tarp it, you do whatever you have to to protect it, but you do not get rid of 66 Chevelles. So get out this weekend, find a car show, have some fun, and enjoy the music, the cars, the memories, because that's what it's all about. They're still having the car show that used to be down at Riverstone at Canton, but now it's over at the Mill. And um, it's just fun to go to those car shows and look around and see the cars that remind us of our past. The engines aren't the same as they used to be. The sound isn't the same. You can't walk in a dealer and buy a 66 Chevelle. You can go buy a car that cost about seven times as much and it's made out of plastic. Y'all, it's like we're driving Tupperware. It's crazy. We're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, we're going to share a little bit of music from Mr. Ella J because you know you like his music. You like the, it reminds you of the mountains. It reminds you of your life gone by. It reminds us that there's a really good time to have in these mountains. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown up, up everywhere and every way. Care of me, care of you. You're my grown up and I know you're there. I'm your grown up and you know I care. Because it's you and me and me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. I feel good, I got 
jeans on, I feel fine. I'll call my baby on the phone. We're going down to Jamie's and watch him shoot a game of nine. Jackie Dunn will be there in his rag top 59. My grill is clean. I've got an eight track in the dash of my machine. And I know every single line. Yeah, Susie's got her dress on. Hanging high above her knees. And when she smiles for the night come, you know it's such a sight to see. Southern city lights, wheels will turn, and the rubber's gonna burn. The glass packs are racking, the power play is screaming loud. We'll cruise the red dot parking lot and see who all is in the crowd. Cause I feel good, I got my best jeans on, it's all fine. I'll call my baby on the phone. Supper time. 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. but I feel like I've had a daycation. I have had a daycation to Townsend, Tennessee, to Cades Cove, to Cherokee, North Carolina. We took Eddie and Loretta up with the uh, motor home and just pulled over on the side of the road and made pineapple sandwiches and spam sandwiches and just had a really good time. I hope that the music and the memories and the beautiful photography, and thank you to Tim Christensen for putting all that together. Those are videos that he took, photos that I took, and then he combined it and made something that just makes me relax. I just love every bit of that. And of course, we had to choose Mr. Ella J's music. And I think that's something that sets the tone for the day. You know, listen to some music you love, whether it be gospel, the old rock and roll. You may even like, you know, bluegrass. Bluegrass really gets you in a good mood because it makes you want to get up and buck dance. So... There's something about the music that sets the tone. There's something about the memories that set the tone. And there's something about the promise of tomorrow. The promise of tomorrow tells us that there are going to be hard days. There are going to be good days. And we know that we're going to get through all of them. And a couple of weeks ago, I asked y'all to help me find out the date of this Eastern Star Cookbook. I have looked far and wide to find a date on this. But it is, you can tell by the pages, it's yellow. It's not tattered and torn, but you can tell it's been used a lot. And this is the favorite Eastern Star recipes. And uh, it belonged to a lady in ball ground, but it came out of, it was done in Montgomery, Alabama. And it blows my mind that there's not a date in there because there are some recipes I am going to try. I bought some salmon to do 
a salmon loaf. I found it on sale. And let's talk about sale prices at the grocery store. What a joke. Even on sale, you can't afford to buy it. It's crazy. But try some of the old cookbooks and grab Mother's Day's coming. We're going to have holidays. We're going to have church get-togethers. We're going to have homecoming. And remind I got to remind y'all, Saturday, this Saturday, beginning at 11 a.m., at Mount Vernon Baptist Church over in Dawson County at Kelly Bridge Road. It's about seven miles outside of Ball Ground, eight miles maybe. Um, not too far, you can call my cousin Dinah Matthews, and you can, Dinah Matthews, Dinah Dinsmore, <laughs> she was a Matthews, and you can order a plate. These are $10 each. You get chicken, green beans, coleslaw, potato salad, a roll, and I can guarantee you it's some of the best cooking you ever put in your mouth. They do this once a year as a fundraiser. And again, it is Mount Vernon Baptist Church. It's where all my family's buried. And uh, they will be having some yummy, yummy food. So be sure and make plans. If you know some shut-in neighbors that you know would enjoy a plate, what a great gift for $10 to give them something to enjoy and just a homemade meal. And again, they begin selling at 11 o'clock. You can get on Facebook and go to Dinah Dinsmore and you can tell her, hey, I want to order five plates, ten plates, whatever. And again, it's a fundraiser for Mount Vernon Baptist Church over in Dawson County, just outside like Cherokee Line, Dawson County Line, not very far apart. So. Today's been a day to reflect, to enjoy, and to remember. And when you think about the scenes that we show, the old home places, the fields, the big old trees, so many trees now have fallen because of all the wind and the storms we've had lately. Goodness gracious sakes alive. Remember that this little tiny acorn, this little tiny acorn turned into this massive huge tree. If you think that you can't turn into something better than you are today, nah, then you don't really understand God's plan because his plan is to make us perfect and uh, to make us perfect in his eyes and in our eyes. Eh, sometimes we don't look so perfect. But at the end of the deal, at the end of the deal, you will feel and you will reflect and you will understand it's all about trust and believing in him. I believe in him, and uh, I know that there are going to be better days ahead for all of us. There's so many people that are sending us prayer requests, and so many people telling us of loss. And um, Dwight lost a dear friend last week, and it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. I lost a dear friend last week when Sandra left here, and I was just like, wow, how could that happen? She was their driver. She was everything to them, and now she's gone. And um, we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow brings. But we know who holds that future, we know who holds that moment, and we know how to get there. So get out and visit all the cemeteries and go and reflect and think about think about those folks who molded you and made you what you are today. I get so tickled when I think about my Aunt Tempe because my Aunt Tempe was a gruffy old lady, but I adored her. And she taught me to pick butter beans. And she taught me that it is so much better to go to the store and buy big old white dried butter beans than to try to pick them and plant them because it takes forever to get a mess of butter beans. And she said, but look at all the fun we've had. And I said, yeah, I've got chiggers, I've got a sunburn, and we've worked all day to have a little old mess of butter beans. But those are the memories of life that matter. Those are the memories that, that tell you, hey, you started there, you're going here, and you're going to end up there. And have a good, good ride along the way. Enjoy every single moment. Today, do something for somebody else. And don't forget, Dawson County Chicken Plates. Downtown, downtown Ball Ground is going to be rocking Saturday morning because 70-year rock collection is going to be out there for you to view and purchase and hold and look at. And it's going to be amazing because, you know, the shops never open anymore. And you just get to go do these purchases once a year. So be sure and get out Saturday morning and come to Ball Ground from 10 to 2. Just here's the burger bus, here's our office, and it's right across the street. So just come over there to the corner of Mounds and Gilmer Ferry Road and you will get to shop till you drop. Ladies, bring a big shopping bag and bring your money. It is one of those times that uh, rarely happens. You will get to touch, feel, 
and hold a little piece of history. We're going to rock it out of here right now. I hope that you enjoy your day, and I hope that you do something for somebody else, because tonight, when you lay your head to rest, you'll feel better about yourself. I promise you that. We're going to leave you with one more song by Dwight Sanford, and you know I trust Trace, so I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'd say it'll be a happy, upbeat something. Here we go. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Fly.